So here I'm here at uh, Radford at Lazy LTG. We're here at the CES 2011. I'm here with Miles Kingston looking at Intel through uh, Intrude 3D. What exactly is Intrude 3D? Sure, so uh, Intrude 3D is a feature we've enabled in all of our second generation microprocessors. We actually just launched them yesterday. So what we have here is we've got a laptop that's got a second generation core microprocessor with HDMI 1.4 hooked up to a 3D TV with these active 3D glasses. So essentially what the processor is doing is it's decoding a 3D Blu-ray and it's sending the two signals, one for your right eye, one for your left eye. It's sending them to the TV so that you can enjoy the 3D content. And then additionally, uh, we already have consumer uh, 3D video cameras and 3D cameras so you can create your own content and then watch them on your display or your TV as long as you have a second generation core microprocessor. And uh, these uh, processors, they're going to be available for um, other than laptops, right? So if these processors were to come out tomorrow, which they, yep. they are, right? Um, they're going to be motherboards that I'll be supporting and I can have actually watch 3D on my own monitors, right? So uh, right now, we don't have support for actually 3D on monitors. We just have support to stream to a television. It'll most likely be a future generation, maybe next year sometime, where we actually have on monitor 3D capabilities. But per your previous comment, we are definitely shipping multiple uh, laptop SKUs or mobile SKUs as well as many desktop SKUs as well. So we basically yesterday launched all of our i3, i5, i7 product lines for both. So it's going to be our high volume runner for 2011. It's where the majority of our volume will ship. So can we expect to see uh, actual processors embedded in you know specific devices like TVs and things like that? or? We will, you will definitely see a lot of that from Intel. Sandy Bridge, or the second generation core microprocessor, is more targeted towards desktops and laptops. So it's, it's more that form factor. You know, it requires a bit more power, but you get more performance for it. So that's where we're really targeting it. You know, it's more going to be the Atom and the system on a chip that you'll see embedded in other devices, et cetera, like TVs. So if I, uh, let's say the, in the future, do you anticipate that uh, it's going to be compatible with graphics cards from NVIDIA and things like that? Is that going to be an issue or not? Yeah, so we already are, are compatible with uh, discrete graphics cards, so we are using processor graphics. Um, right now, the one challenge we do have is if you, do, if you put in a discrete card, the visual features such as Intrude 3D get disabled, because that's typically what happens when you put in a discrete card. But we are working on options to resolve that, so that people want you know to have a high-end discrete card who are gamers, but they also want the processor graphics capabilities, such as Intrude 3D and QuickSync Video. They can have both of them, so we're working on a support for that. Uh, do you anticipate that there's going to be also games that will be supporting this type of technology? Because right now, NVIDIA is doing that right now with their cards. Right. Do you think there's going to be some sort of clash between the two since you're going to be... For 3D games or...? 3D games as well as 3D movies. So I don't have to sort of switch back and forth right. the card and the processor. Yeah, I, I would assume that both, you know, the processor graphics and discrete cards on the market will be able to support both. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of uh, 3D games out there right now, but my expectation is when they start ramping that both discrete and processor graphics will support it. These are the active glasses, so these aren't the passive ones. These actually have batteries and they have the shuttering about 30 times a second in each eye, and that's what gives you the, the depth perception. So you'll, it'll be on on the right, off on the left, and then vice versa. And uh, it's a pretty amazing picture. I mean, you'll see here in a second. And because what you see in the movie theaters today is typically the passive glasses, which, you know, something looks more traditionally like this. Um, resolution and the quality is not quite as good as you get with the active lenses. Right now it's proprietary, so if you have a Samsung TV, you need the Samsung glasses. But I think there are already uh, third-party manufacturers out there who are making glasses that'll work with all televisions. We're bringing 3D content to the computer, essentially. Yep.